Here's a update on the sunflowers. Um, here's one right here. Uh, I'd say about an inch and a half up. Two leaves. Some of them have. They're starting to get the the two going the other way. But there's a foot apart. They are. Some of them didn't germinate, or they germinated, but they didn't come up yet. Because they're at different depths because of the antique planter. This one, it's got a third leaf growing. And this one here. Next crop is field corn, and it is about an inch out of the ground. Sweet corn, which is marked by these two rocks, stacks of rocks. And right here, it's about three quarters of an inch out of the ground. Definitely growing and germinating. Middle here, we dissed up and did not plant anything so that it would be soft for summer when we plant oilseed radish and purple top turnips in this area right here. So down at the bottom here, we planted buckwheat to stop erosion. As you can see, the field washed out quite a bit right there. You can't really tell the steepness, but you can see all the rocks here and all the dirt that went down into the woods from the rainstorm. So we planted buckwheat at the bottom to stop erosion and we planted uh, five, no, six rows of sweet, or not sweet corn, field corn up and down to help the erosion stop too. And so that this hunting club over here can't see into our field. Hopefully it grows. But you can see where we packed down the soil and where we roughed it up, the, it's growing a lot better where the planter went through. And then over here, a couple days later, we were realizing that this was growing faster because the soil got roughed up. So we rolled this two days ago, and there was you couldn't there was no buckwheat growing. And now look at how fast it's it's not as frequent as over here, but it will be. You can see all the buckwheat growing in there. And then once the buckwheat grows up knee high, it'll flower. That's really good for honeybees. It's a really good um pollen source for them and then you can brush hog it and then it'll grow the next year all right so i got my weed whacker here and some gas mixed gas and we have to weed whack this um wetlands here we like to cut it once it gets just about a couple inches below your knees and it's way too wet to mow like there's standing water in it and that's way up past my ankle but see it's, it's just a couple inches below my knee, so it's time that it needs to get weed whacked so let's get it done All right, so I'm third of the way done, and I got through the heavy stuff. There's still a little heavy stuff over right in there a little bit, and up there by the pipe, but that won't be too bad because it's not as much distance going this way. So they'll go quick, and I just stop for a gas up, and I'm gonna trim along the top here 
because that's a little high. And in this area right here on the to the right of the little ditch going here that I dug, I'm gonna try to get the big mower down in there. It may not be pretty, but it's um it does a better job on that little fine stuff than what the the trimmer does. All right, so two thirds of the way done. Uh, I stopped for another gas up and it is not a clean job, that's for sure. But it needed to get done and it looks a lot better what I did. So let's get the last part done. All right, that's a good job done. Looks really good now. Let's uh, mow the yard. I'm a little grassy, don't you think? Boy, I should just weed whack and then turkey hunt. I feel like a homemade ghillie suit.
it's got the whole front yard mode um didn't take me that long because probably took me 20 minutes because the tractor i think you can go 13 mile an hour without um having skips like dandelions and stuff and it spreads it out real nice you can see um over there i got it down in there and it made it some marks but not bad and right over there i sunk down in there so i gotta fix that but i just gotta do up here around the trees and then the other side of the house and then we'll switch to the zero turn